Welcome to the Samantha Leith Show with me, Samantha Leith. Now this month is all about planning your year, doing what you can to make it the best year we possibly can. Some things are gonna sound familiar and some things may be really new to you, but either way, I encourage you to tackle this planning with excitement because you never know what extraordinary things may happen. What exactly does your 2022 look like? Have you even thought about it? First things first, we need to accept that there are some things we cannot control. In my vision for 2022, I had a trip to the Maldives. Now, I paid for this trip in 2020 and I technically have till September to take it. Is it going to happen? I have no idea and no control over my ability to travel internationally. I can control my thoughts about it. And if I decide to refund it refunded or try and get it extended, which is what I'm going to do. So now it's gone and I feel no drama about it at all. What about you? Is there something that hasn't happened over the last couple of years that you're struggling to let go of? I'd look at that and I'd just let it go if you can. Let's make 2022 the year of things that don't feel like a struggle, which brings me to my word of 2022, but more on that later. I want you to sit down and describe your ideal life for this year. Get comfy, grab a beverage of choice and immerse yourself in the process. You can also download a worksheet Bit of a hint to help you with the process. Get as creative as possible, live it now. What are you doing? Who are you with? What have you achieved? Write with love for who you are in the present tense and being as descriptive as you can be. Grab a thesaurus and go. Write it in full of meaning and inspiration to you. Let the words flow so it shines a light on who you wanna become this year. Talk about your strengths, your passions, how you want to feel, your skills, your values, people, and well, anything that comes to mind. Because don't censor as you write this, but write so it challenges you to achieve your dreams. At the start of every year, I write a letter to myself and I encourage you to do the same. Grab pen, paper, and write about what you want to achieve this year and how you're going to feel about it. Write it with love. Put it away, say don't open till December the 31st. And then on that day, hopefully if you've done everything that you wanted to do this year, when you open it, the boost of energy and excitement and confidence you get from reading that letter will be amazing. Have you ever said a word for the year? Hmm, you're probably gonna laugh and it really doesn't bother me. My word for 2021 was obsession. Not in a stalker kind of way, but in the 100% I am gonna be doing whatever I'm doing kind of way. I was so into it that a friend found me a bottle of Calvin Kind Obsession and I've worn it even now as we're filming in December 2021, every single day. So how do you pick yours? Sometimes it can be so freaking obvious, we don't even need to think about it. Other times we need to let it percolate till it becomes clear. So we worked on your vision for the year. Were there any common themes or words? Jot them down. And yes, you can download a worksheet to help you with the process. Next, list out some things that you really want to focus on. Again, what's common in that list? Now that you've got these lists, what are the feeling words or the words that make you feel something? For example, nature might have come up a few times and that makes you feel peaceful. Money may have been a common theme and that makes you feel abundant. Once you've got a list of three to five feeling words, this is where it gets really tough for a Gemini like me, you need to commit to one only people. There you go, that's the hint, commit. What is the word that feels like it would motivate you and would make you feel committed to those less than spectacular moments in your year? My word for 2022 is ease. I feel like the last few years I've been pushing a three-legged goat up a mountain singing, high on a hill is a lonely goat herd lady, oh, lay, oh, lay, in high heels wearing a tight latex frock. I want to work with ease, sleep with ease, achieve, achieve with ease, love with ease, stay connected with ease. You get the point. Once you've come up with your word, I want you to surround yourself with it. Probably not as far as having it tattooed somewhere, but close. Pictures, word clouds, objects, screensavers, 
perfume. Anything that you can to remind you of what you're trying to feel in 2022. As you're going through all these processes, it's quite fun to, you know, have a bucket list. We've all heard of a bucket list for like, you know, when you kick the bucket. Well, how about a bucket list for the year? Just, you know, randomly think of some crazy things that would be freaking awesome to achieve because you never know. Whack them up on your vision board and maybe include them in your thoughts for the year. So let's get into the nitty gritty, creating your goals for the year. So we did the 10 step method for creating goals. Check. Vision for the year. Check. Word for the year. Check. Now we go for gold, as I like to say. To do this, I want you to look at your wheel of life. Now, here's mine. Family and friends, romance and sex, business and career, physical environment, health and fitness, finances, contribution and personal growth. The eight spokes in my wheel. Now, some wheels have fun, creativity, leadership and more, but so do what feels right for you. You can have a Google if you like. Then I want you to make a list of three to five things in each area that you'd like to achieve. Great, you did it, our work here's done. Can't wait to see what you do. Okay, I'm joking, there's a wee bit more work to do. If you try to achieve three to five things in all eight areas, you'll be very busy, overwhelmed, probably fall down in a heap and give up, which is not what I want for you. Again, there's a worksheet that can, you can grab to help you with this. It's simple maths. I believe you can achieve three to five bigger goals this year and three to five smaller goals each quarter. So let's divide and conquer. When you look at your list, what are the things that will take all year? What's achievable in the next 90 days? What will take a wee bit more effort? Write numbers next to each thing on your list. For example, paint the house, two, three. Quarter two, priority three. Speak conversational French. Probably gonna take the whole year and it's probably priority number three. And if you're feeling overwhelmed by something already, get rid of it. You'll be amazed how clear you will feel leaving them behind. So once you've got the list, create the goals. And remember to create that powerful statement for each one, one that'll drive you, make it as succinct as possible because you're gonna be writing that baby out lots. I'll give you a bonus tip. Now's where you also want to rewrite any of those longer term, big, hairy, audacious goals out as well. And I said audacious, not audacious, but that's okay. Thanks for watching this week's episode of the Samantha Leith Show. Be sure to head on over to samanthaleith.com forward slash whatever way it goes freebies and grab any of the worksheets I mentioned. And I'd really love it if you'd click on that subscribe button and share this video. When you do, don't forget to tag me so I can say thank you. And remember, I believe you are extraordinary. You have got this.